Welcome back to this already the final segment of today's Price of Business, and I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. I tell you, it's your business to know how to communicate, and our guest today is going to talk about that right now. Ryan Foley, he is with uh, uh, a company called Foley, F-O-L-E-Y, learning.com, and uh, is also an expert on a deception detection in the workplace. I want to talk a little bit about both. You're you're big on communication. Kind of give us an overview of what Foley Learning is all about, Ryan. Well, sure. And, and thanks. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this morning, Kevin. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, look, Foley Learning is all about communication, as you mentioned. And when it comes to business, the thing that gives us the edge, of course, is knowledge and then knowing how to use that knowledge. So the way I look at it is, what I do is help people, whether they're in law enforcement, healthcare, or business, make better decisions. Okay. In, in fact, I noticed that uh, you had actually written a blog on this just recently, and that was the very first point that you made. The thing is, is we don't often realize that a lot of the extra knowledge, that extra information that's available to us is right in front of us. Okay. What, which article are you referring to? Uh, you recently wrote a blog on making better business decisions. Okay. Um, on the, on your show. Oh, on priceofbusiness.com. Very good. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And I tell you, it's absolutely crucial. Uh, kind of give us an overview of who are clients of your company. Okay. So basically, I work with the major areas I work in is law enforcement, work with attorneys. In fact, I just had a uh, an email from an attorney I worked with a few months ago. He was telling me about a situation there in court. He said, look, I came up to one of these. Oh, I was in court. There was one of these witnesses, one of the smooth ones, the ones that, you know, you you have a hard time locking them down. But I picked up on some of those indicators you were talking about, and I was actually able to get the key admission in the case. I love the way he framed it. He said it was game, set, and match. So here, you know, law enforcement, they're the big users of deception detection. But when it comes to business, one of the major areas we're finding that it's important is in the hiring of people. So when it comes to hiring someone, you want to make sure you get the right person because the wrong person can cost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, they say a second-level manager, for example, can end up costing, what, $840,000 wow. if they leave after just two years. Wow. Where did you um, – can I, can I give you an overview? Uh, I mean, how many attorneys would you say you've worked with? Well, uh, a few here in Houston. Uh, one of the attorneys that I really enjoy working with is out of Washington, D.C. So uh, his name is Bruce Ailson, a civil rights attorney. He used to work for the Justice Department. And uh, he's actually helped me a lot just by giving me some insight on some of the things that he's been through in the past. He told me a story about uh, a judge who used to get red in the neck when attorneys would push him too much. And he knew that as a sign to back down. So it's interesting. It can be applied in the court, talking to witnesses, talking to uh, debriefing people before they go to court. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, how you can tell someone's being deceptive. Well, there's several indicators for that. Most people think, you know, it's all in the eyes, but that's not actually true. We look at the eyes to communicate. In America, we tend to do it about 60% of the time, right? Yeah. But really, the biggest indicators are clusters of actions, clusters of behaviors that deviate from somebody's baseline, what they typically, how they typically say, how they typically act. A lot of it, for example, might be in the lips. If somebody doesn't feel uh, being backed into a corner or they, they feel terrible about something that's being revealed. Their lips will completely disappear. You might have seen it looks like an old, older person who's taken out the teeth and the lips kind of fold inwards. Mm-hmm. That's a sign that something's wrong. Um, body language and micro expressions are great for indicating, lo- uh, well, attitudes and feelings, which we lie about all the time. We constantly mask those with a smile or even it, we might be afraid and we mask that with anger. Mm-hmm. So those things flashed on the face, and they're just a 25th of a second. But uh, probably the thing that's most important is statement analysis. In fact, it's about twice as important as body language when you're trying to determine a lie. 
So in the case of a, a hiring manager, for example, let's say that uh, somebody's talking about a, an accomplishment from a former em uh, employment. They might start off by saying something like, well, yeah, basically, I was in charge of so-and-so and such and such. Well, that basically, that's what we call an indicator. It's a hot spot. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong there. It just means look, look a little bit further. It's saying there's more to the story here. So when you hear that in a hiring interview, you want to dig a little bit deeper because 80% of people tend to overstate on their resumes or in a job interview. And so it's an opportunity to dig a little bit deeper. You might also hear a statement like, well, that's really all I can say about that. Hmm. And it's the same situation. See, the question, the question you could probably ask right after that is, well, that's interesting. What can't you tell me? You know, and then get a bit more detail. Yeah, that, that. that would certainly be uh, potentially disarming, wouldn't it? Or, or uh, you know, get them off of their uh, game, if you will. Yeah, it will. But, you know, there's even things that you can do right off the get-go to improve the chances of getting a truth, say, in, a, in an interview with a, with a new potential employee. And that is, and this is interesting, because there was a study that was done out of univers well, Duke, Harvard, and the University of Toronto. And they found that when a, with a job application, at the very end, there's a statement that says, look, everything I've said is the truth. Um, it's verified and so on, and they, we, we sign it. But by the time you sign that statement, it's too late. You've already said everything you're going to say. So the best thing that they found you can do is take that statement and put it at the very beginning of the job application. They sign it, and that elicits what's called the consistency principle. Now they've said, look, I'm going to be completely honest, and the chances are much higher that they will be. In fact, it cuts in half the, uh, the chance that they'll lie on that application. Interesting. Interesting. So let me ask you, is this generation somehow worse than previous generations, or is this being something that you're seeing transcend all generations that are looking for work? Talk a little bit about that. Uh, you, are you talking about the, the tendency to lie? The tendency to lie. Yeah. Is that, is that a bigger issue with the millennials, or is that something that transcends all the generation groups? Well, look, it, it transcends all generations. If you, you can go uh, quite, a, quite far back. Even think about Mike Brown, who was in charge of FEMA during Katrina. Uh, you know, he, he started off not doing too well, was taken off the job. It turns out that back in the 70s, he had basically said that he was second in command of, uh, of emergency response for his small town, Edmond, uh, when in fact he was simply the personal assistant to the guy who was in charge. He had no, he had no management over any emergency services. And then uh, also under honours he had received, it had stated that he uh, had received outstanding political uh, science professor at Central State University. Turned out he had just gone there as a student. Mm -hmm. this, this starts back in the 70s and was added, added to further on down the line. So here we have, you know, the very top person in the United States was, was fooled by information. Mm -hmm. So it, it transcends generations. And it can be, uh, in this case, it can be quite tragic. Yeah. I know Zappos.com CEO uh, recently was interviewed by a business insider, Tony uh, Shea, and he said that, you know, since Zappos.com started back in 99, he's calculated that uh, they've lost over $100 million in potential revenues and other issues because of bad hires. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, that's because either they were hiring people that weren't a match for the culture, or they just weren't able to do the jobs that they were hired to do. Yeah, they were so just that, simply simply bad hires. Yeah, that's just uh, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. So, uh, uh, but, does your company actually help in that process as well? Yes. Yeah. How, how do you do the, that? Well, it's a three-step process. First, you have to you've got to have a strategy and plan. So, there's the approach, what to look for and then what to do with that information. So your approach is going to be the overall strategy, and that might include putting things in place to make sure you get the truth to begin with. You know, you, you create an environment where you're more likely going to get the truth. And then tactics. 
what to do when you're picking up on these hot spots, these indicators of deception, to dig a little bit deeper and get the information you really need. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Once you have that information, well, of course, you make better decisions, better hiring decisions. Perhaps even get a, one of those A-level employees because they've been shown to be about four times as productive as well, even your average employee. Ryan Foley, he's been our guest. He's with FoleyLearning.com. That's F-O-L-E-Y, learning.com. Ryan, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, look, I really appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you. All right. Do you want to remind the listener the show will continue 24-7 at priceofbusiness.com. Great audio and video and much more there. Plus, I want to remind you to check out usdatareview.com, the national news website. While there, like it on Facebook, follow on Twitter. Have a great day and spend it wisely on this station.